Well, I'll let you in on a little secret. That song right there, there may be one or two in the world that mean more to me than that. I can't think of them right now. That is one of my top, most meaningful, favorite songs ever written because it's so true. I, I know that not, of, not all of you may get that today, but you're in the right place if you don't. If you think your life is all about you, you're in the right place. If you think your life is all about your plans, your hopes, your dreams, what's going on in you, you're in the right place. Because I want to tell you something. You built your life on a shifting sand yeah. if it's about you. If it's about you, and I say this with the most utmost respect, but if your life is about you, you have a fool at the helm. I know y'all didn't forget how to say amen over the Easter, did you? If your life is all about you, you've got a fool for a master. Right. <laughs> Jesus is the only one we built our lives on. Lift your hands in this house, every man, woman, boy, and girl. And out of your lips flow the name of Jesus. Come on, let it come out. Flow. Jesus. 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 Jesus, 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 Jesus. Demons tremble at that name. Mountains crumble at that name. The seas roll back at that name. Clouds vanish at that name. Valleys raised up at that name. Sickness defeated at that name. You are healed because of that name. Peace comes with that name, torment goes. Thank you, Lord. Well, if you're here as a guest from Easter and you were here with us last week, I just want to thank each and every one of you for being here. Uh, we're going to remain standing. I'm going to preach right now. I'm going to move into some other areas of the service that are important to the church life, but I just really want to welcome all of our guests. Could you say to them that Lighthouse is glad you're here? Thank you, Lord. And would you take this opportunity to thank all the cast and the crew and all that worked so hard for being so great last week? And would you give Jesus Christ the ovation of praise you know he's worthy of? Come on. And just before you're seated today, I want to make this very clear that when you walk in these doors, the expectation is that you get enthused and you get excited. Not about me, not about any of our team, not about even the singing, not about the building. But I make this one demand on you, and I'm not going to compromise on this. Never will, never have, and don't hold your breath. But we need to be excited. If Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to, to us, I think we ought to act that way. I think we ought to get excited about Jesus. People shout at crazy things, ball games, and their husbands. Yeah, I know. When you shout your husband, you shout at a crazy thing. I get that. Shout at the dog. Shout at the kid. Shout at the car. I think Jesus is the only thing we really should shout about. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Yeah, lift up a shout, everybody. Come on now, church. I want to put you just for a moment in the book of Acts. I'm going to move into Acts chapter 3, and then we'll jump to Acts chapter 4 if you could. I know you've stood a while, but just one more time in honor of his word. In Acts chapter 3, then Peter said, he said to the lame man, silver and gold I do not have, but I do have something. Here's what I do have. I have the name of Jesus Christ. 
How many have a real fine, big, fancy car? How many have a real big, fine, $3 million mansion? How many have all the money you've ever wanted? How many have, you know, just the body you want, the hairstyle you want? It just, you're just, life is an absolute dream. You, or how many don't have a, a couple of things that you thought you might have at this point in life? But here's what you always have. You have the name of Jesus. We are Christians. We have the name of Jesus. So in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Peter took this man by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, the lame man, what did the lame man do? He did things that lame men don't do. He leaped, he stood, he walked. Walking and leaping and standing, then he entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. Walking, bear with me. <laughs> Nobody didn't say that. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty lame. All right, here we go. Whew. Walking and Leaping and praising God. Well, let's see you try it, smarty pants. <laughs> let's go to verse 10. Let it be known to all of you. This is chapter 4. Peter's preaching. And to all the people of Israel. Because I was wondering what, what happened to this man. He was, he was lame, now he's not. Let it be known by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. By him this man stands here before you whole. This is a stone which was rejected by the builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Neither is there salvation in any other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. I am going to continue the series started before Easter on Satan's vicious pursuit versus God's victorious power. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Would you lift up your hands and just invite God's word to just come into your spirit, come into your heart. Right now, Lord, we just thank you that you would quicken us. We thank you, God, today you refresh us, you renew us, and that when we leave this place, we'll be able to walk and leap and praise God. Somebody give the Lord a mighty shout of praise. Hallelujah. Would you do that, everybody? You may be seated. A couple of weeks ago, the Lord gave me this, this thought because the reality is, here's what life is about. It is about a couple things. It is about an enemy who is in pursuit of you. Don't think for any moment that there is not a plan, an agenda that has been schemed up in hell that doesn't have you on it. I want you to hear this preacher tell you that everything that God has ever given you, every good gift he's ever poured upon your life, the devil has his sights on it. The thief comes only. Here's what, what, does, what do thieves do? The, the thief steals. That's what thieves do. The thief comes only but to steal. This is John 10:10, 10, 10, To kill and to destroy. And Jesus said, but I have come so that you would have life and that you would have it more abundantly. The reality is those two components are opponents of our life and they are at work even now. The enemy has a vicious pursuit. 1 Peter 5 and 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant for your adversary. The devil is like a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. But Jesus has come to give us great victory. Now here is why we have victory in Jesus. And for some of you, there's two kinds of people in this church this morning. Those who have victory in Jesus. I was hoping for at least six. Those who have victory in Jesus. We're up to 15, that is great. Hallelujah, this church must have an awesome pastor leading to have 15 victorious Christians. 
I said, those who have victory in Jesus. Ay, ay, ay. And those who are about to get victory in Jesus. That's what's going to happen. You either came in with the victory and leave with the victory, or you came in without victory and you're leaving with victory. But everybody in this place is going to understand you are victorious. I read somewhere in 2 Corinthians 2 and verse 11, now he gives us the victory. He always calls us to triumph. I read in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, that he gives us the victory in Jesus. He is a victorious God. I read in 1 John 5, 4, whoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. I read in Romans chapter 8, why can we say these things? If God before me, who can be against me? I come to announce to you in no uncertain terms today that if you are in truly a believer and you are truly in Christ Jesus, you have long walked in victory and you don't worry about the vicious pursuit because you have victorious power. And you say, anytime the enemy has come against you, you say, get behind me, Satan, in the name of Jesus. I think this births out of a pastor's heart who sees people struggle. I want you to hear me today, and I want you to grab a hold of this. When you were born again, you were meant to defeat that struggle mentality. Are you all listening? When you came into Christ, your days of constantly, oh, Lord, it's another day. I just, my God, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I just, the devil's been after me all day. Bless his holy name. I just don't know. I just, it's just such a struggle. It's just such a battle. I don't know what Jesus you're serving, but the Jesus that I'm serving got me out of that mentality. I'm not going to be a struggler. I've just made up my mind every day ain't going to be just, you know, make it through another day attitude. I'm going to walk with peace. I'm going to have joy in my life. I'm going to be content. I'm going to be fulfilled. And we're going to leave this church to be a church that is triumphant. Yet yeah, the enemy may come in like a flood, but the Spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard against him. Yes, weeping may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Yes, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. Come on, somebody. Let's take a praise break right now and give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. So we have victory. Here's why we have confidence. I told you we have confidence in the victorious power of, of Jesus and the victorious power of God because we have power and we have confidence in the victorious working power of the cross. Hallelujah. Colossians 2.14 says, Having wiped away and destroyed all the handwriting and the ordinances that were against us, all those things that come against us, Jesus nailed those accusations to the cross. Hallelujah. They thought they were nailing his hands to the cross, but what they were nailing was all those lies that everybody told against you to the cross. What they was nailing to the cross was Satan's plan to defeat you to the cross. All those handwritten ordinances that, that were happening in an unseen world was nailed to the cross, and having taken them out of the way, he disarmed the enemy. He disarmed principalities. He disarmed all of the things that the enemy did, and he made a spectacle. He embarrassed Satan openly triumphing over them in Jesus name I got news for you the devil thought he was embarrassing Jesus Jesus was embarrassing the enemy so we have victorious power through the cross we have victorious power secondly through the resurrection hallelujah it was the resurrection power that brought him out of the tomb. Jesus said in Revelation 1.18, I am he that was dead, yet I live, and I have the keys of death, hell, and a grave. I live forevermore. Hallelujah. I want you to say today with me, I have victorious power. You are not meant to be defeated. And listen, somewhere along the line, you got to get this. Somewhere along the line, there has to be a light come on, a shift. Because I love you and I care about you, but it hurts your witness and it hurts the will and the hand and the face of God to watch his lovely people just walk around struggling all the time. You who are parents, it hurts you to see your child unhappy. Come on. 
and it hurts the father to see you unhappy. Psalm 144, 15, happy. Everybody smile. Joel Osteen didn't invent the smile. Come on. Happy are the people whose God is the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. A merry heart does good like a medicine. I dare you to smile a while and give your face a rest. I mean, you know, we walk around like uh, Jesus and the seven dwarfs. Dumpy, grumpy, dopey, goofy, grouchy. Come on, am I telling somebody that what they need to hear today? I mean, if Jesus is your Lord and Savior and Master, the one who conquered hell itself resides in you. He has made your heart his throne. Hallelujah. And there ought to be a moment in time when you leap and walk and praise the Lord, knowing that what you was, you are not any longer. Hallelujah. So we have victorious power because of the victorious power of the cross, of the resurrection, and hear me today. You and I have victorious power because of the name of Jesus. Uh, the beginning, the beginning days in this New Testament started like this. In Acts chapter 1, verse 5, Jesus showed himself alive with many fallible proofs. He was seen over 500 people. And he was about to be ascended, but he said, I'm going to give you power in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. He says that I will give you power. You should be my witnesses. Power, 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 power. When was the last time you exercised your power? Come on. You walked into a room. with G We sing Jesus when you walk in the room. Well, I'm carrier of Jesus. He lives in me. It's in him I live and move. It. Where I go, Jesus goes. When I walk into chaos, chaos has to stop. When I walk into drama, drama has to give way. When I walk into pain and suffering, it has to relent to healing because I carry Jesus with me. I'm a carrier of the presence of God. When I walk into the room, I have power. And I say, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, uh. My beautiful wife who I love with all of my heart, I love her more than I could express with words. She is the love of my life. And I fell in love with her, honestly, because of the way she talked. Seriously, I had never met someone who could talk like her. You know, I dated a couple times, but they were all kind of ditzy, you know. Aren't I a cute princess? And I remember hearing my dad say, if you marry a princess, what that means is a long life, Bubba. So I said, I ain't going to marry no princess. I found my wife to be a jewel. And I wanted to tell you something that on our first date at Godfather's Pizza in Springfield, Missouri, I just probably fell in love with her after the second or third slice. Because I scraped my pennies together, college student, and I bought a large Godfather's Pizza. It weighed about 15 pounds. I mean, it was about that thick. It had half a pig on it. It had a thigh chopped up. I mean, it was just, you know, it was just about that. Each piece, piece and I, so, so she, she started talking, and I realized she wasn't eating. She was just talking and talking. And the more she talked, that more, the more I got to eat. <laughs> and not being a rocket scientist, I still thought, this, I got a feeling I'm into something good. Something tells me I'm into something good. And, and I'm going somewhere. Hang on with me. And, and so all these years, she has a gift of communication. She's a great communicator. And the other day, she was on a call with a salesperson. And here's what I'm getting at. Can I tell this story? I can't tell it. And she was talking, and she was talking how she greatly communicates. And she was telling the situation, you know, pretty good. And she heard the guy say, ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta. She thought, what's wrong with the phone? So she started talking. He says, that what he said? Ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta. And 
she kept telling she he said ma'am ta 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 in other words you shut up so i can talk i said all that i mean i went to springfield and got a pizza i come back to tell you this thank you baby i love you don't ever change a thing hallelujah but here's the reality sometimes you need to say to the devil ta 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 ta, ta. He's up in your business. Uh, isn't that great how I got there, Keila? 20 minutes later, here I go, hallelujah. Well, I haven't preached for a while. Come on. And some of you just listen to that fool, that dog barking your eyes, barking your life. Well, you're going you're gonna to die. You're just going to fail. It's not going to work out. You're never going to have enough. You're always going to live broke. You're always going to be defeated. You're always, nobody loves you. Nobody cares about you. And you're just a loser. You're just, you're fat, you're ugly, you're stupid, you're skinny. You got a big nose. You got no hair. You got bad teeth. You got, you just ain't got a good job. Nobody cares about you. If you die, who would care? And when are you going to say to the devil, Da, 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 shut up because I got something to say and here's what I'm telling you there listen to me devil Jesus Jesus and I will tell you what the devil must shut up in the name of Jesus demons tremble at the name of Jesus so one more time jump to your feet everybody and let's practice on the devil. Here we go. Da, 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 da. <laughs> hey. Listen here. I'm not letting you do all the talking. You're going to have to listen to me. Woo. Death, you listen to me. Sickness, you listen to me. Poverty, you listen to me. Drug addiction in Richmond, Indiana, you listen to me. I come not in my own power, not in my own name, not in my own ability, but I come in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. So in Acts chapter 2, Jesus said, you're going to have power. Things can change. That was Acts chapter 1. In Acts chapter 1, verse 11, uh, he was talking on Mount Olives, and the, the angels began to receive him out of their sight. And... He says, you know, you're going to go tarry in Jerusalem. And so the angel said, go and obey. So 10, 10 days later on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2 says, on the day of Pentecost. Now here it is. They were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there was a mighty rushing wind that filled that room. And cloven tons of fire set upon each of them. And they all were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues. As the Spirit gave them mutters. Make no mistake about it. What makes us Pentecost is that we believe on the day of Pentecost, tongues came as the evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and we still believe that. No, where did it stop in the Word of God? So now they get accused of being drunk. They begin to step out. Peter, who denied Jesus a few days later, a few days before, even to a young girl, couldn't, couldn't stand up. Now he becomes the pastor of this church. And they began to bring all the things together. They worship, they fellowship, they love the Lord. Acts chapter 1, Jesus is taken. Acts chapter 2, a church is birthed. Out of that upper room that could no longer contain them comes a church. And that day, that day, 3,000 were saved. Now, they walk to the temple, Acts chapter 3. Peter and John are walking together, and they see a lame man. Both feet were lame from his birth. He has a cup, and he says, alms. Can, he's begging something. He looks to them expecting they would give him something. They wouldn't carry any cash. They didn't have their credit card. They didn't have their phone. I mean, they had no method of payment. Check. I mean, checks. Remember the checks? Those things you'd write on? I had a, a young person tell me the other day, Pastor, talk about checks. I don't have checks. Talk about cash. I don't have cash. You talk about credit cards. I don't even carry those anymore. I live my life with my phone. I want to pay something. I zip, zip. I thought, well, good for you because I get a little sick of the phone if I'm telling the truth. But the reality is, I'm not talking to you wonderful, lovely people. That's not what I meant. Just. <laughs> and so they had, they had no money. Kenny, they had no silver, they had no gold. 
But he said, such as I have. Now, I'm interested in that. That intrigues me. You got a man wanting money, but you don't have anything. What are you going to do for him? He came, somebody put him on a mat, brought him to the temple. Surely God's people would take sympathy on him and feel bad for him. And surely they'd drop something in, in his cup and yell, I mean, why not? Why, why not come and expect something? And the, the pastor and a man of God, Peter, Peter and John, you don't get any more holy and awesome than that. Powerful. Well, they didn't have any money, but they had something. And some of you have forgotten what you have. You have forgotten what's in you. You have forgotten what you're made of. Royal blood is in your veins. You've been adopted in the family of God. He calls you his son and his daughter. Oh, what manner of love the Father has given unto us that we should be called the children of God. You are God's child. He loves you just like he loves his son, Jesus. He paid the highest price he could ever pay, the precious blood of his own begotten son. Now listen to me. That's who's in you. You need, to forget, you need to forget all that garbage that you're not somebody awesome. Come on. I'm just telling you. Walk around like I'm nobody special. I don't know who told you that. You're the apple of God's eye. That sounds special to me. Mm-hmm. And so he just said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. Is that your right hand? Where's your right hand? In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 When's the last time you got a hold of that thing that was down in your life? When was the last time you said to something, you know what? Something's going to give right here. Either you're going to get a miracle or I'm going to be the biggest fool in the world but I'm not going to sit by and do nothing. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk, and he pulled him up. He pulled him up. He got a hold of that and pulled him up. Hallelujah. Philippians 2.9 says, Therefore God hath also highly exalted him, that at the name of Jesus Christ, Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that he is God to the glory of Christ. Hallelujah. We are serving an awesome and a mighty God. Praise the name of Jesus. Yeah. Woo. Hallelujah. I come to announce today that there is no other name. There is no other way. There is no other option. You and I have the great and mighty name of Jesus. So now the stage is set. The Word of God goes on record that Pastor Dylan, the church that you and I are part of, will be triumphant. We will do exploits. We will see God do great things. But it will not come, watch this, without cost. It will not come without controversy. And it will not come without conflict. There is always a cost involved. Amen, somebody. So the upper room couldn't contain them. In Acts chapter 3, here's what happened. A series of firsts began to be ensued. First of all, it was the first miracle of many. What did they do? So when this man was healed, you know what they did to the guys who raised him up? They got mad at him. No wonder Jesus said, let not your good be evil spoken of. You and I, no good deed goes unpunished. You and I will try to do great things. And they will attack you for it. You try to be a blessing and they will judge your conduct. Or they will judge your motive. You try to do good things and they will take cheap shots at you. And they will try to ruin your good name. But even though they kick you for doing good things, do good things anyhow. So now they, we see the first miracle. Then we see the first persecution they began to have this court and they began to accuse John and Peter what they did how did this happen and it would be the first of so many persecutions the church would always suffer persecution church I want you to hear me the nearer we get to the coming of the Lord Jesus 
Don't think for a moment this world is going to love us. We are not in the popularity business. We are not in trying to make everybody think we're awesome. But what we are trying to do is say Jesus is the center of it all. Jesus said, if they hate you, if they hate you, don't worry about it because they hated me first. Come on now. Persecution will come. Blessed are those of persecution, for they shall receive joy. Hallelujah. Brought to pass the first thing, miracle, persecution, and the first time they understood the authority of Jesus' name. Listen to me. Jesus said, in my name you'll cast out devils. In my name, you'll lay your hands on the sick, and they shall recover. There is victorious power in the name of Jesus. When I invoke the name of Jesus, breakthrough has to come in the name of Jesus. Let me make a couple of thoughts this morning. I discovered in this story, first of all, that there is more power in the name of Jesus than any other name ever given. Understand that. When you have Jesus in your life, you are the most powerful source in the world. Listen, what the world doesn't know and the world won't acknowledge and the world won't say it, you and I are part of the church. We are the most powerful organization in the world, but we don't know it. We have all this power, but it lays dormant. I say it's time for the sleeping giant of the church to rise. Come on now. It is time that we start exercising our power. It's like that guy goes to the gym and gets all, well, like me, buff. And, you know, he can bench press, you know, four or 500 pounds and squat and cling and jerk and all that stuff those guys do and curl and all this stuff. And, uh, you know, I went, I, I, I was so humbled uh, here recently at, the, at our uh, workout at the fight club. We got, we got dumbbells. And I got this 15-pound dumbbell, and after about 4, 5, 10, I mean, my arm is killing me. And I remember being a, a football player, taking 60, 60 pounds, just going. I thought, I'm becoming an old, weak man. How in the world? But it's like having all those muscles and going home, and you can't open the pickles. Your wife has to open the jar for you. Honey. I want, I want some peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Well, it's right there. Babe, I can't open the jar. Would you do that? I mean, what's the point? Come on. If you have all that muscle, you ought to be able to open your own peanut butter and jam. And you and I have all this authority and all this power, and we walk around like little Steve Urkels. Did I do that? Come on now. 90-pound weaklings. And we just put up and tolerate with every scheme and plot and plan of the devil, and we do nothing about it. But the name of Jesus resides in us, and it's time that we exercise victorious power with the name of Jesus. When's the last time you said to the devil, Devil, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Shut up in the name of Jesus. Da, 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 da. Hmm. Let me make this thought. Secondly, when th something has happened in your life and there's been a change take place, you don't go back to what you used to be. I just want to, I just want to tell you that. I want to announce some of you today. The Bible says that he took him by the right hand in Acts chapter 3 and 7, it said, In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And that man that was lame, his ankle bones began to get strength and began to get power. And for the first time in his life, he was set free. Now, there's nowhere in the Word you'll ever see that man at the gate beautiful on that mat begging again. I want to put on the screen 1 Peter 4 and 9. Here is an very important, powerful, powerful verse. It talks about how you and I do not return back to the beggarly elements. We do not go back 
to all the things that had happened in our life. And we are going, we're going to get this on the screen. I believe it's the top of page four. But I want to tell you something. This is an important verse that a lot of us forget. If we don't have it, just say we don't have it. It's Galatians 4, 9. But now, thank you, gals, for now, after you have known God, watch this, or rather know by God. Huh. How many known this exists in the Word of God? How is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage? Hey, can we talk? How many have been delivered from lying? Uh, talking, let, let me, can we converse? Can we conversate? How many have been delivered from cussing? Oh, so the rest of you still cuss. So I got about half liars and half cussers here today. I got my work cut out for me. How many have been delivered? Oh boy, why? Uh, why am I glutton for punishment? From gossip. How many have been delivered from a bad attitude? How many of you, it doesn't matter how I ask any question, you are not going to raise your hand. How many have been delivered? Oh, okay, it's going to get real. From hopping in out of the bed with people. I mean, oh, Jesus, help me. How many have been delivered? Okay, let's stop raising our hands because I'm getting too personal. All I know right now, we got a bunch of cussers, liars, gossipers, bed hoppers. That sounds like a great church to me. Hey, how many used to drink and do drugs and act a fool? Come on, somebody. Tommy was, okay, everybody right now get ready. Just go ahead, get, get your right hand up. Go ahead, get up. And say to your right hand, you're about to be lifted. Say it. Come on, come on. How many remember the day when you were real selfish? Hey, I got 80%. I'm growing to quit. Hallelujah. Well, now watch this. That man did not go back to that mat. He did not go back to begging. He did not go back to sitting there talking about, hey, can I have some alms? When Jesus got a hold of his life, there was a shift. He was lifted from his environment. He thought differently. Think about the next morning. I mean, he, for the first time in his life, didn't have to wait for someone to lift him out of the bed. For the first time in his life, he didn't have to find his cup to beg with. For the first time in his life, he didn't have to lay on that nasty old mat. He probably went and burnt that mat in the trash. I'm sick of you. I'm done with you. Carried around all my, and he said, watch this. He didn't go back and lay down and talk about, I'm lame, alms for the poor. No, listen. Why are some of you still acting like Jesus never set you free? You're still gossiping. You're still cussing. You still have a bad attitude. You're not who you used to be. You're, you, know, you know how you know somebody got saved? Things change. You don't got to go around telling everybody, hey, I got saved. Yeah, you can tell them. I want you to. But they ought to, they ought to ask you first. Then you can tell them, what, what, what's good? 
You look like you, you dress like you, but you don't act like you, you don't talk like you, you don't have the attitude you used to have. You're completely different. Something's got over you. What happened? Well, somebody got a hold of me and said, in the name of Jesus Christ, and now rise up and walk. I mean, the man was 40 years old. And they said to Peter and John, what did you do? And they go, it was the name of Jesus and faith in that name that raised this man up. I'm going to tell you something, church, today. We are going to invoke the name of Jesus. And you are going to feel something break in you. I'm a little tired. I'm a little wore out with Christians still being defeated and struggling and acting like I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you what you're going to do. You're going to get up and you're going to get victory and you're not going back to those beggarly elements anymore. That's what you're not going to return like the dog to its vomit. You're going to put your back to that mess and you're going to go forward in Jesus' name. believe animals can talk. I'm not Dr. Doolittle. But the dog ought to be saying, what's wrong with you? You don't kick me no more. You don't cuss me no more. You're nice to me. I had to give you interpretation. Come on now. I mean, your wife your wife, your kids, your friends, your co-workers ought to see there has been a transformation. Where's the change? Where's the change? I'm a Christian. Well, you ought to bear some new fruit then. If you was a drunk before you're a Christian and you're still drunk after you're a Christian, you didn't become a Christian. If you was a racist before you was a Christian, and you're a racist after you become a Christian, you ain't got you ain't got it yet. If anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. All things become new. If you was a tightwad and stingy and greedy before you was a Christian, and now you don't like that the church collects tithes and offerings and you get a bad attitude, you're not a Christian. You something has to shift. There has to be a change in your mind. You gotta think differently. Your mind's been washed, your mind's been renewed. And you say to those friends that try to continue to entice you, look, I want to be your friend, but if you keep trying to mess with me like this, we can't be friends. You try to bring that mess around again, I'm free from that. Don't you tempt me with that. And if we can't have a respectful relationship, then God will just have to give me some new friends. But quit being influenced by the voice of the world. Why does anybody that's going to hell have anything to say to you? got nothing for me. I'm not taking advice from them. I'm not writing down the top ten things from them. I'm not listening to them. They have, they're not smart enough to accept Christ. They're not smart enough. And church, I want to tell you, in case I'm a little fired up this morning, it's time that there is a transformation in God's people and Lighthouse Assembly of God where they walk in and they say, Dear God, I know this is a crazy place. But all I'm seeing is all these people, something must have happened in their life. They're leaping and jumping and praising the Lord. What it happened? And you know what? I want me some of that. I want me some of that. Come on now. Would you jump to your feet and give the Lord a shout of praise? Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and begin to invoke the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I say to you, rise up and walk. 
Jesus. Jesus. Church, let's begin to praise out the name of Jesus right now. Jesus. Jesus. I'm going to keep it real. I want you to hear me. I'm going to keep it real. I say this with a deep love and concern. You have told yourself, yeah, I'll, I'll go to church. Yeah, I love the music. I, I, I even love Pastor. He gets on my nerves, but I love him a little bit, you know. Oh, he's all right. You know, I love him. Yeah, I love him. Yeah, he's, what's there not to love? If anybody don't like me, they just don't know me yet. But somewhere in your mind, you've assigned yourself to the non-shouting group. You have told yourself, I'm just, that's just not me. No, wait a minute. What if that layman was shy and backward and awkward and timid? Do you think he cared what anybody thought he did not? He was lame on his feet and never walked, and all of a sudden, he is walking, doing the two-step, doing the funky chicken. What did Michael Jackson do? The moonwalk. <laughs> oh, you know how, come on, Mary. She said, that's not, come on, Mary. She said, that's not quite right. I did not know. No, I've never done that moonwalk. Go with it. Oh, you're going to do the moonwalk. He didn't care. Listen, I don't care if we've been here an hour and a half and you haven't said, Jesus, you should start doing it now. If you haven't praised, if you're not a shouter, what's wrong with you? He sent you free. He delivered you from a bondage of sin and hell itself. I don't know why you wouldn't want to shout. I don't know why you wouldn't want to praise the Lord with a loud voice and give Him glory. Santa. We're going to sing the name of Jesus is lifted high. The fast one. We're going to dance. God is a good God. He's a good God. If he has not been good to you, then sit down and pout. But if he's been good to you, you ought to praise him. Yeah. Yeah. I dare. I dare somebody. As we sing this song, to step out in the aisle. Just challenge you to think about how good God has been to you. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Yeah, hey, shout to the Lord like hands. said if I'm lifted up I'll draw them in to me some of you today listen you're still in your sin you just 
You're just living in sin. You know that. And today, it's, it's deliverance day. It's freedom day. How many right where you stand could say, Pastor, there's things I've tolerated in my life. I've tolerated in my life, and they have put a wedge between me and God. A behavior, a decision, an attitude, a lifestyle. They've come between me and Jesus. We're not close, we're distant. How many would say, that's me? Right where you're at, just lift up your hand. Right where you're at, that just all around, all around this room. All around this room. I see him. And there should have been others. So I didn't lift my hand, but I'm going to now. Come on, I'm tired of living in sin. Would you raise your hand if you haven't? Listen to me. If you're not in the altar, I want you to walk to the altar. Back here, hon, sir. Come on. Take a step. Thank you, Jesus. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. It's okay. Something happens at that step. Something happens when you step out. Something happens when you step out. of struggling laying around not going anywhere I'm so tired of just being in the same place every day looks the same mm -hmm. my God how many know Jesus is in this house right here right now he is in this place hallelujah thank you Lord you walk to this altar I want you to bow your knee you can come and lay on the altar you can bow where you're at in fact let's just come to the altar all those who raise their hand I want you to kneel this altar right now come on just go ahead and kneel right to this altar right now now we need some Peter and John's in this place I said we need some Peter and John's in this place to come and lay hands on these right now lay hands on them and say, come on, men. We need some brothers down here. Yes. And I want you to invoke the name of Jesus over their lives right now. Devil, you won't have them one more day. Devil, you won't control them one more day. As I was praying, as I was praying, something surfaced. It might be emotional, it might be spiritual, could be clinical. But there has been rolling in to the church, not just an attack, but a spirit of depression. Depression. Some of you, clinically, you, you, there's some wires that need reattached and get sparking fine. But many of you, But many of you, it is just such a spiritual battle. There are things that can only be won in a spiritual realm. You are here in an atmosphere where Jesus is, and I want you to take advantage of that. Don't walk out of here saying, I should have got something, but I didn't. I, that's on you. Your victory's here for the taking. You don't need to continue yes. down and in despair and down on life and down on yourself and down on God and just down on everything. Listen, there is a hope in Jesus' name. He will lift you up. He'll lift you up by the miry clay. He is the glory and the lifter of your head. Get your head up.
in Jesus' name. So if you're here and that speaks to you, if you're here and that speaks to you, we want to sing it again. And if that speaks to you, if what I just talked about resonates in your life, would you be bold enough to trust God? And I dare you to step out and say, I'm, I'm trusting Jesus now. I'm putting it on him. All right, we'll sing it again. If that's you, just come and join me, and we're going to cast that nasty stuff out of you because you don't need to live that way. You don't need to live that way. I said you don't need to live that way. Can we just lift our hands and thank Jesus for his wonderful, sweet work, for every miracle, every spirit of depression has vanished. We're not going to struggle with that anymore. We're not going to be defeated by the world anymore. Today, something has changed. I'm not going back. I'm not sitting back and begging another day. That's not me. That's not me. I'm not going back to that old life.